Okay, we are live. There we go. It's live on the tubes. Yay! We have another show. Get ready. It's pre-stream time, folks, for anyone who shows up early. Not too many people do. Occasionally one or two in the world show up early to say hi. But not too many on it. It is what it is. So I should be finishing up the fence this weekend. That's awesome. Has all the rain been helping to keep the ground soft for you? Well, yeah. If you're digging post holes two feet down, it's nice when, when the ground is very wet <laughs> to dig. Except when you run into a giant piece of a giant rock. Or concrete. <laughs> or concrete. I actually had to put a pole. I had to dig a, a hole near where there was already a pole in the ground. And the concrete from the previous pole that was put there was spread out. I had to get out there with my breaker bar and a hammer and break the concrete to be able to get the hole dug. And good exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, definitely good exercise. It's great for the upper body. Yeah, but uh, I'll be putting the panels up on Saturday and... Then after it's all set and secured with all the panels in place, because then I'll cement the poles in the ground, and by next week, it'll be all cemented in, and I can start filling back in the holes, back filling the holes, and take down the temporary fence and everything else. So if you use cement to put the, the stuff, uh, the poles in, then what do you do when you have to change out the poles because the wood is going bad, do you have to like you, dig out the whole amount of cement as well and replace the cement too? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have to remove the pole, if you if you just got to go in the exact same spot, you got to dig the cement out. Okay. Yeah. The things you learn. Yeah. I don't imagine this will be replaced anytime soon. You know, it's wood. It's it's treated. Oh. It's treated wood. It should probably last for twenty years. I'll be right back, eh? Okie dokie. Squirrel! Let's see. Dead air. Dead air, dead air, dead air. Da -da 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 dead air. So what happens when you have nothing to say and no sounds to play. <sighs> you think I'm tired or something? And I'm back. Who got tired? No, so it sounds like I'm tired or something with yawning. Ah, uh, well, not necessarily. Isn't a yawn just meant to give you more oxygen to your brain? I have no idea. There, therefore, it could just be that your nose is stuffy, so you're yawning. My nose isn't stuffy, though. Ooh. Hmm. Well, I have no answer for you, then. Yeah. Tired. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> I got nothing this morning. I got nothing in the random zone this morning. Yeah, I don't really either. Aside from, you know, my cat being moody. Yeah, well, cats are cats. They're moody. Yeah, they usually are. But I mean, my cat is, he's pretty easygoing, happy-go-lucky. I mean, he's a happy, floppy kitty ever since we got him. Today's the first time he's ever been moody. It's mm. weird. Out of character for him. Mm. Maybe he was moody because we wouldn't play with the string for a full hour with him. Yeah, maybe. My cat is a string addict, which sounds really weird, but once you start playing with the cat with the string, mm -hmm. um, if you stop, he sounds panicked and so upset and so pitiful. Yeah, well. He just doesn't shut up until you pick up the string again. <laughs> doesn't work out enough. Okay. Your what? alter ego says he doesn't work out enough. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's a kitty cat. The kitty cat or you? It's a kitty cat. Ah, yes. My kitty cat is a kitty cat. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm not going to get my chickens tomorrow, which I'm rather bummed about. Got to wait, wait another five days to get my chicks. Why five days? Is it like because you need to wait for another batch? Or? Yeah, waiting for another batch to hatch. Okay. Because when I get the chicks, they'll be they'll be like uh, a day or two old tops. Hmm. Yeah, brand new babies, basically. I wonder how long do chickens chicken eggs incubate for? Twenty nine days. Twenty nine days. Okay. Mm hmm. I want to see your baby chickens. You have to send me pictures. Oh, there'll, there'll be all kinds of pictures and videos and, <laughs> you know, add that to the videos of the chicken coop, which hey, I'm still I working could, on. Hey, maybe I could punk to your grandchildren with you up to go visit the baby chickens. No, no. What? No, no. But they would love the baby chickens. Uh-huh, I'm sure they would. Come on, you don't want to give them the absolute thrill of cute little baby chickens? Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. Island. <laughs> somebody, somebody offered up a name for one of the chickens, Pot Pie. <laughs> hmm. The boys want to. I'd probably just chicken. call them all chickadee. Yeah, they're just chickens. Chickadees. I'm not so sure if naming them is a good idea. Well, I don't plan How to eat the chicken. How can you tell them apart? Yeah, actually, you'll notice that it's like everything else. They'll be slightly different feathered and, you know, each one will have a slightly different look to them. They don't all Did look you know the that same. you can tell what color egg they're going to give you based on the color of their ear feathers? Yep. That's, that's a cool little thing I learned recently. I thought it was neat. I've seen that in one of the many articles on stuff I've been reading about chickens in the last uh, few weeks. As I prepare to take on the challenge of raising chicks into chickens without them dying. <laughs> you really don't want them to die on you because they cost 25 bucks a piece. Yeah, you don't want that. They're expensive. Although $25 is a lot cheaper than a cat. Yeah, well. My kitchen cost me $150. Yeah. For just himself. That's all right. Let's see what we got here. I think we're close enough. Enough of trying to make all the little small talk. Let's uh, have a little music. Carry us to showtime.
Devil's at the crossroads, sitting doing time. Chucky and the chigger just seen who done the crime. Captain pulled the trigger, guess who's doing time? They went missing. Down Highway 49. Devil's at the crossroads. Is he yours or is he mine? There we have it. It is time. Let's get this show on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for WordPress plugins A to Z, not Z. Hmm. No monkeying around with WordPress plugins. It's episode 559, and we have plugins for monkey editing. Monkey proposing, dino gaming, floaty buttons, ice cream, ele ice creaming elementor, updating foots, and classic <laughs> press options. All coming up on WordPress plugins from A to Z. WordPress. It's the most popular content management and website solution on the internet. And with over 80,000 plugins to choose from, how do you separate the junk from the gem? Join us for a weekly, unrehearsed conversation about the latest and greatest in WordPress plugins. This is WordPress Plugins from A to Z. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out there on the globe today. Coming to you direct from the oasis, deep in the heart of the Cowichan Valley. It is episode 559, and I'm John Overall, and with me is the ever-lovely... Amber Overall. And we have a great show for you today, and don't forget, a couple of quick things. This is a value-for-value value show, and we look forward to everyone providing some value back. And for some really great fun, you do want to hang around to the end of the show for the Q&A segment with Amber, which is always entertaining. And those listening in on the podcast, you may want to go check out the YouTube version, which has some, you know, sometimes very entertaining discussions in a pre-stream, something in the uh, pro stream, a uh, past stream or the end of the stream or whatever. And also the Q&A segment is split into two parts where the first few questions are for the podcasters and the last question is always for the YouTube people. So you want to check that out. With all of that being said, I may as well. Thank you for sharing, John. Now get down from that soapbox. I think if you hear that enough, eventually you'll just be stuck in your head so you'll realize when you're ranting. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, not going to work. Aw. This is number 19 of 52 episodes for 2022. And it's tax season. Hopefully everyone out there got their taxes done. I know it's not really all that fun, but it's needed. And once you're finished doing the adulting, you can go ahead and get yourself a treat for doing so well at playing adult. Chores done, go play. <laughs> Do this with a friend and it makes the whole experience way more fun. You can grab ice cream or cookies or fruit and yogurt or a mocha thingy or any kind of awesome treat. Be sure to remove the socials and the media from the entire experience. It definitely adds to the fun time. Rinse and repeat as often as needed. Absolutely. Please, can everybody be quiet? Please be quiet. Shut up! Thank you. 
And now the WordPress news with John Overall. What Amber? <laughs> First up, WordPress vulnerability report for April 27th, 2022. This week's plugins to look at are a few, and the more popular ones that I noticed are social stickers, advanced uploader, custom tiny MCW shortcode button, the age 23 social, which I'm not sure if they're doing the or what, WP Smart Wishlist for WooCommerce, and there are more. And there is also one theme. It has been patched, uh, but you'll want to definitely check it out. This theme is Fusion Builder. Oh, that's a pretty popular theme. Yeah, so it has been patched, but it's on the list because if you if you use Fusion Builder, go update it immediately. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, that's a pretty popular theme. I almost chose that once upon a time. Yeah. Yep. Uh, years ago, but I just I, <laughs> I just know it's a, a pretty popular theme. I've seen it fairly often. Okay. And next we have MemberPress plugin is now locking users out after support license expires. Yeah, I saw this. So one. this is yeah, this is a new thing that they're doing. MemberPress is a popular membership plugin for WordPress, though they've started locking out users of the plugin's admin if they do not renew their subscriptions. WordPress subreddit has lit up this last week with reports about it. This plugin does not have a free version so that you can scale down, and although the membership only costs 179 per year for one site, the fact that it now locks you out is kind of an issue because by doing so, it's cutting off access to the plugin's admin screens, leaving users without the ability to manage the membership functions of their sites yep. if their subscriptions lapse. So they can't get refunds, add new members, manage memberships, site activations, or do any other action that you can only do through the admin screen. Yeah, I saw this and I thought this was a pretty sleazy thing to do. I actually, yeah. I think I have member press running on a site and I'm actually just going to cancel my my uh, my license for this. Because I, I just find it wrong. I'm hoping more people do that because there's other membership plugins out there that don't do that, that are as good as MemberPress. But uh, yeah, I saw this and I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to deal with a company that does this because there's lots of reasons why you would let your membership run, run out. You know, Maybe you don't have the money at the moment or you just want to push it for a while before you renew it or or anything but you expect that it's still going to have the functionality that you already paid for you know the licensing the licensing in all of the years i've been doing this it was never for the plugin because the code is all open source what it's for is for the updates and the and the uh, uh support is what you're paying for but to do this to their user base Wow, I really hope the user base pummels them. I know I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to uh, cancel mine and uh, never renew with them again. So yeah, just not cool, man. Not cool. Yeah, I think I have one. I think I have one site I work on. I'll just convert it all over to uh, paid membership pro, which I have been using for the last couple of years. The only reason I kept this license because the site was already functioning with this plugin. Mm -hmm. So. So I'll cancel it, and they won't get my 179 bucks, which I'm sure mine is a drop in the bucket. But if enough people hit the drops in the bucket, the bucket gets full, full, uh, full pretty fast. <laughs> Next up, we have a paired back web font API may land in WordPress 6.0 or it may not. So the web font API was originally set to come in with WordPress 5.9, then it was shunted down to 6.0. And it's starting to look like it's going to be shunted down yet again. Another feature that appears to have been shunted down the line is post author name block. The beta one for 6.0 is out, so you can go and play around with it to see for yourself how the features are doing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, apparently, these two particular, or sp specifically the web font API, was something that a lot of people have really been looking forward to, and they just keep pushing it down the line to the next one instead. Hmm. Not really sure why. Don't know. I don't know much about this one. I've not followed this particular issue. Next up, Munir Kemal. I think that's how you say the name. No, WordCamp Updates US and Trials. Overhauls. Hmm? WordCamp US Trials is your next one. 
Do you want to skip oh, it? Oh, you're right. I don't know how I missed that. Sorry. Uh, WordCamp US Trials, new program connecting underrepresented speakers with sponsors for travel and lodging costs. So WordCamp US going on September 9th to the 11th in San Diego. They are trying a new program that would connect speakers from the underrepresented groups with companies that agree to sponsor their travel and lodging. I honestly think this sounds like it could be a great idea because I know that there's a lot of speakers out there who get completely uh, looked over because they're not as well known. So if they're starting to go for the less well known speakers, I think that's a great idea because they probably have a lot of information they can share, teach, all that kind of stuff. Well, the thing is about WordCamps is originally they did this. They went with the lesser well-known speakers, which is why I got to speak at WordCamps. But the problem at WordCamps is the WordCamp is not allowed to give you a per diem or pay for your travel. You have to pay for your own travel to the WordCamp. And you have mm. to, of course, pay for your own food and lodging while you're there. You know, most And here of, they're trying to get the companies to do it to try to help out. That's right. So they're trying to sense. trying to get some get some sponsors for them to help them out because that's what you were supposed to do, find someone to sponsor you, etc. But uh, yeah, and that's the problem. That's why you always hear about these you know more popular speakers, and of course every other conference out there in the world they they pay the speakers to show up. Mm -hmm. They pay them a fee. They pay their travel, their hotel expenses, and such. But WordCamp, the only way they could keep the uh, the entrance fees to the word camps down at, I think, I don't know what the fee is now, but it used to be capped at $25 per day per ticket. And that was so that okay. everybody could attend. So word camp had some great ideas in the beginning, but a lot of things have gone sideways on it over the years. I kind of miss the original word camps, the original word camps. They were lots and lots of fun then back in the good wild west days of uh, word camp of uh, WordPress. <laughs> Okay, now we're to the Munir Camo yep. updates and overhauls the block slider plugin. So for people who use this, the original plugin allowed users to insert a slider block and create the slides directly from the post or page editor. The new approach is similar, though end users can only edit from a new block slider post type. For those already using this plugin, be aware that the new version breaks compatibility with your old galleries. Be hmm. sure to make up uh, uh, to make a backup to revert to if necessary. There are a lot of benefits to the updated approach, though due to changes creating the incompatibility issues, it may be a bit of a hassle. Yeah, it sounds like it might going to be a bit of a hassle for people to update to that one. It's, yeah. always, it's always a pain when when the developer updates to the point and it breaks all the old stuff you've already done. Yeah, it is kind of frustrating. <laughs> Uh, next, we have local launches Atlas add-on for sandboxing headless WordPress sites. So local is a popular WordPress development tool maintained by WP Engine. It has launched a new add-on for quickly spinning up headless WordPress sites on this new Atlas platform. This could be a very useful addition to those who need to test this out for a site. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to bring forward, let everyone know it exists. Okay. And... Coming in Gutenberg 13.2, users' editor preferences will be stored in the database, improving persistence across sessions. So you can do things like finally get rid of that initial welcome to the block editor notice to stay gone. <laughs> and you can keep your preferences for your APIs, for your blocks, all kinds of things. So you won't have to redo it every time you go in there. That'll be useful. Very much so. That'll make, that'll make the building out of pages a whole lot easier. And the last one I have, as usual, I have a nice fun one. This one is Stargate's Invisibility Cloaks, Nuking the Moon. The U.S. military's wildest tech research. So, really and truly, they have been working on Invisibility Cloaks since 2009. Though, you know, I don't have my Harry Potter cloak. I don't think they've actually figured it out yet. Mm. <laughs> And they are working on Stargate since 2010, though they're still a bit flabbergasted in how to get it to work. And exploding the moon, the reason for this idea is to try to get to the center of the moon to try and find its gravitational well. Kind of makes me think of a Tootsie Roll lollipop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. 
yeah, this is just a really fun one. Neat. All right. Then Alrighty. we've got the extras, where randoms and uh, cybersecurity, all kinds of good stuff. Cool. All righty. Well, let's move along and talk about those that support the show with their time, talent, and treasure. It's time to donate to WP Plugins A to Z. So this show won't work without you, the producers, as this is a value for value kind of show. If you're finding value in our show, toss some value back, help keep the show going so we can keep on plugging. And this is where we, show producers, this is where we like to take the time to thank everyone who supports the show. This week's artwork <coughs> is by Greg's Graphics, I think. Yep. Yeah. There it is. Greg's Graphics. I really like this. It looks like the monkey is giving a thumbs up, although I know it's just eating. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does kind of look like the monkey's giving us a thumbs up for all of our all of our plug-in reviews. It's a good picture. I like what he did with it. Mm -hmm. Very nicely done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quite cool. And you can submit artwork yourself by going to wpplugins8z.com slash artwork. And... Um, then we have the show executive producers up on the stage this week is nobody. Executive producers are the ones coming in with $50 or more in donations. You can also uh, send along a note that will be read out live on the show. You can just say hi, or you can send in your elevator speech and get a little self-promotion while donating to a good cause. And then we have what I have renamed our backroom producers. And our backroom producers hang out in the lounge we uh they play a really big part in keeping the show going some of these producers are anonymous benefactors coming with donations under 50 dollars. our best known backroom producers are those who help us out with our contest artwork and site organization some of our backroom producers help out the show by sending us in notes questions plug-in suggestions and plug-in reviews and other backroom producers help out the show by sending in licenses for the contests our least visible backroom producers help out the show by hiring us. This is as good as donating, plus we get the added bonus of more experience to bring to our listeners here on the show. A big thank you to all the producers out there. We could not do the show without you. Excellent. Thank you all. Greatly appreciate it. And you can support the show with your time, talent, or treasure. We have a list for everyone to have a look at in the show notes here. Just a quick explanation time support you can subscribe to our newsletter spread the word about wp plugins a to z through your social media youtube wherever you find yourself you can catch us live and watch us on the youtube channel every thursday at 11 a.m you can send us in articles news or general wordpress information to share either here on the show or on our site wp plugins a to z and you can send us in plugin suggestions or reviews for the show for talent uh, you can submit artwork to WP Plugins Art Generator, or if you can think of something that, uh, as you can see, think of somewhere you could use your talent, shoot us an email. We can talk about it. And treasure support, donations to the show, or you can go to Patreon. And if there's something we haven't listed here, send us an email. We'll talk about it. Absolutely. If you want to send, <laughs> want to send something in to us through snail mail, you can find us at. WP Plugins A to Z, the entire address is right there in the show notes for you to find. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's move it along to what everyone shows up here on the show for. And that is for the plugin reviews. Into the depths of plugin depravity we go. All right. Classic Press Options. Well, Classic Press I does it looks like it might have a future after all. We're just not having time right now to help them get out there. And there is some stuff out there on Classic Press. Uh, nothing new from our end of it. If you are a Classic Press user, you listen to the show, please, you know, kick some information our way and we'll get it out there and spread the word for you. All right, as far as WordPress goes, what have I got? The first WordPress plugin I have for you this today is called Snow Monkey Editor. And Snow Monkey Editor is a plugin that extends the block editor. 
and it adds a whole lot of different things into your block editor for you. It adds things such as extensions, um, settings for the inspector, block styles, text badges, text highlighting color, you know, all kinds of little tidbits in there, including some JavaScript uh, snippets to help with it. Just a whole bunch of additional things that you can use for your block editor. I thought this was a cool one to bring forward to trying to get myself wrapped around the uh, Gutenberg editor myself. So at any rate, this is one to go check out. It is the Snow Monkey Editor, and I gave it a four dragon rating. And the first one I have is click to contact float buttons. Doesn't seem like it'd be a, a tongue twister, but Click to contact is definitely a tongue twister. This is a nice looking plugin. Once installed and activated, you'll find the settings for click to contact under your settings menu option on the left hand side. And in there, you have the option of adding your links to just about everything from Reddit to Twitter to Instagram. Once your link is in place, there will be a button automatically created for you and you can choose whether or not the button appears on the left or the right hand side. Right is the default, you can tell it to stay on the left side. Cool. It's completely free, beautifully done. It's a very nice plugin. I like the way the buttons go larger when you hover over them as well, but the lack of personalization for colors and look and feel the buttons makes it a little less than what I was hoping for when I first checked it out. I rate this at four dragons. Alrighty. The next one I got for you, is for those of you folks out there that are running your own business, uh, web business, development business, hosting business, this is a plugin I tripped the pot. It's Code Monkeys Proposals. Easily create client proposals from your WordPress admin dashboard. In other words, you can create client proposals directly from your WordPress dashboard. They've got a long explanation about why they why they created it, how they created it. But basically what it does for you is it gives you a default layout for creating a proposal. You can stick your own logo in there, your return information, company name, project name, and then you've got all these little default spots for company name, client phone, all of that. And so when you're creating a proposal, you go through and fill out all the information that needs to be filled in for all the different clients. When you're done, you generate a PDF of it and then you mail it off to your client. I thought this was a pretty cool, useful tool. That could that uh, is useful. be of useful to, to folks that are just trying to figure out how to get their proposals built up in a nice professional manner. I don't do them like this, but I thought it would be useful for those that might just be starting out and looking for an easy way to do it or getting some ideas on how to deal with it. At any rate, I thought it was one that was useful to check out. Go check it out. It's the Code Monkeys Proposals. Easily create client proposals from your WordPress admin dashboard, and I gave it a four dragon rating. And the next one I have is ice cream Elementor add-on. I have to admit it was the name that initially caught my attention on this. I was imagining <laughs> like something about an ice cream, but it's not really anything to do with ice cream. Instead, what you get is four widgets added into your Elementor. Fancy button, image gallery, image hover, and menu image. The image gallery is my favorite. It fits all of your images into a beautifully done mason tile style. The fancy button is really just a button, but you can personalize it any way you want. You can even make it dual color, so it's like pink on one side and purple on the other. So that's yeah. what I did when I was playing with it. <laughs> the image the image hover, well, it, it just looks sort of, it just sort of shifts upwards when your mouse goes over it. So useful if that's what you're looking for though i didn't find it overly useful myself because every time my mouse hovered over it, it like the image would go up and half my image would be cut off yeah but the uh, menu image this one is really cool too you throw in a picture and a menu will appear on the left hand side when you mouse over it the initial setup is actually quite pretty but you can personalize the menu and set it up uh, set up whatever links you desire change the colors you can do all kinds of stuff with it all in all, I think this is a great free plugin. A lot of thought seems to have gone into the designs for these four widgets, and they do work really well. I rate this at five dragons. Cool. All righty. The final one I've got for you here today is an excellent way to waste time on your website or 
to get your clients or visitors to waste their time on your website. It is the dinosaur game. <laughs> it's the dinosaur game for WordPress. It takes the dinosaur game from the Google Chrome and puts it in your WordPress website. And of course, if you haven't seen the dinosaur game, you're living under a rock somewhere. It's, or they just don't have kids. Or they don't have kids. Well, no. <laughs> everyone runs across it sooner or later. Even I did. And I didn't have kids at the time. So, <laughs> you know, basically you're a dinosaur. You run across the screen. You jump over things. And you just do that over and over again until you finally get bored or irritated. Anyway, I thought this was cute. It's fun. It's kept up to date. You just install it, activate it. And I don't remember what they said about how to put it on the page, but it's there. And... You can go play the game and waste time, and it is free. And because it was fun, I give this one a five dragon rating. Check it out. It's the dinosaur game. I think you just use a short code and put it wherever you want it to be. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, Last one I, I have for today is uh -oh. date your footer WP. This is a really useful plugin, especially for those who often forget to do the little things like update their copyright notice in their footer. Yeah. With this plugin, all you need to do is replace the short code is place the short code UIF underscore WP into your footer and it will automatically update your copyright year for you. Yep. It may seem like a rather small thing, but really it's the small things that break us down. Mm -hmm. I rate it at five dragons. Very cool. All righty. Well, that wraps up all the plugins we've got for you. And we don't have any listener feedback or listener questions. And we are still hunting for a, another license to start a contest. We will let everyone know as soon as we have another contest on the horizon. All right. We got to cover up a couple quick things before we get into the uh, Q&A segment. Um, Plugins I covered up in this show is the Snow Monkey Editor, which I gave a 4 to, the Code Monkey's Proposals, which I gave a 4 to, and the Dinosaur Game, which I gave a 5 to. And I covered Click to Contact Float Buttons, which I rated it 4, Ice Cream Elemental Add-on, which I rated it 5, and Update Your Footer WP, which I rated it 5. Absolutely. Bunch of great plugins for everyone to check out. All right, and a couple of quick things here. There is a meetup. It's planned for June 25th. We, I will be getting out the specific information the middle of next month for everyone that wants to sign up and show up for it. And uh, you will enjoy it. It'll be held at the Oasis. So it'll take you having the RSVP and uh, confirm before you get the instructions on how to get here. If you're interested in being interviewed by WP Plugins, um, you want to be on an interview show, just reach out to me at WP Plugins, A to Z dot com slash interview to book your interview time. I have time set aside specifically for the interviews when people want to uh, be interviewed. And it's a great show. It sets apart from the podcast. And it's a great way to promote your plugins, your WordPress events, uh, your WordPress stuff, anything WordPress or related to working in the WordPress industry. If you happen to have suggestions on plugins you want to have reviewed, go submit them to WPPluginsA to WPPluginsA-Z.com slash submit plugin. And that can be any plugins, whether you built it, someone else built it, you're just recommending it. Doesn't have to be yours. It can be anyone's. So, all right. With that, let's wander into it's question and answer time. What Amber? <laughs> So before I get started, if anybody out there has questions they'd like to have asked here on the show, send them in to me at amber at WPPRO.ca and we'll get them in here and see if we can stump my dad. First question I have for you is, let me know if you've ever seen this with a plugin. Deactivation goes fine. Tell it to delete and it takes about five minutes of thinking, then it says deleted. When you refresh, it's still there. Deactivated, but not deleted. Any idea what's going on there? Bad code. Bad code? Well, okay, the deactivation is deactivation activation is done by WordPress. Mm -hmm. But the deletion itself isn't completely done by WordPress. There's so, supposed to be a little cleanup code in the uh, in the plugin. Or it could be 
it could be WordPress itself is not uh, is not working to delete the plugin because WordPress is just supposed to delete the folder. Um, but there have been times where they don't uh, delete and I have to go manually delete the folder, which means that any changes it made to the database aren't there. But good coding practice for plugins and it started a few years ago, more and more developers are doing it now. If their plugin makes changes to the database, they're supposed to clean up and remove those changes when you delete the plugin because it'll run a script before it deletes the plugin. So I, I would just assume bad code either in WordPress's in okay. WordPress itself or in uh, in the uh, plugin itself. But I can't remember the last time that occurred to me where I went to delete it and it didn't delete. I have I have a couple of plugins in my sandbox that just won't delete. Oh, I'd so say, my next I'd say question it's a, I'd for say you it's a is how how do you delete something off your WordPress site when the delete button won't work for you? Oh, well, that's easy. You FTP in and go delete delete the file or delete the folder. And if that doesn't work? If that doesn't work, there's something wrong with your server. Okay. You know, cuz it means you don't it means there's not it means the the folder or file permissions are completely wrong if you can't delete it. I mean, there there is the, come to think of it, there is a case that I recall a couple, three years ago where somehow when it was installed, it got the wrong, the wrong user attached to the uh, files. In other words, it wasn't the user of the account, but it was the root user of the server. And if it happens, if that happens, then only the root user of the server can delete the folder and files. I haven't had that happen in quite some time, and that that probably happened because I was I was being cheat that day, and I was logged in as root, and I uploaded the files as a root, and I didn't think about it. But but yeah, it's is the the, the it, there's oddball things that do happen occasionally, and it's usually due to if you can't delete it via FTP then there's something odd with the file permissions or settings in that in that account for that particular folder basically what i would do is try to delete some other file that was unimportant see if i could delete other files but i couldn't delete that it's definitely a permission file with that if i couldn't delete anything the whole account might have a permission file a permission issue for its account would going through cpanel do the same thing as as ftping in yeah cPanel is cPanel is basically FTP. It's just a different oh. form of it. You know, I would kind of consider them completely different things. I guess just because they look so different. They they look differently, but it's still the same kind of access. FTP is using a program, you know, a client program that direct accesses the server only for specific tasks. Of FTP cPanel allows you to do so much more. Like you mm -hmm. can you can open up and edit files when you're in CP uh, the the uh, the control panel file manager you know so there's okay. a, lot, a lot you can do different levels of different levels of things you can do but it's all ba it all basically does the same stuff oh i have one more question okay i'll read it out when building sites have you found one style type over another works better in general or is there are, are there style types that you would recommend to the client based on what they are building their site for? Hmm. An interesting question. All right, we will come back to that one after we let our, let our girl take us on out of here. Reminders for the show. All show notes can be found at wppluginsatazf.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter for more useful information delivered directly to your inbox. WP Plugins A to Z is a show that offers honest and unbiased reviews of plugins created by developers because you support the show. Help keep the show honest and unbiased by going to wppluginsatoz.com slash donate and set the donation level that fits your budget. Help us make the show better for you by subscribing and reviewing the show at Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and in the iTunes Store. You can also leave us a review on our Facebook page using wppluginsatoz.com slash Facebook. You can also watch the show live on YouTube, check out the screencasts and training videos, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications of all new videos. Follow the show on Twitter at wppluginsatoz. John can also be reached at his website, johnoverall.com, 
or email him directly, john at wppro.ca. Thanks for joining us and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. This show is copyrighted by johnoverall.com. So until next time, have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. see what we got here final question when building sites have you found one style one style type over another works better in general or is there style types that you would recommend to the client based on what they're looking for can you kind of clarify what you mean by style types you mean design styles of the website yeah like uh one of the things i hear often is less is more or um, like make sure that you don't have a lot of dead white empty space on your site, but at the same time, don't fill up that empty space too much. And style types is in like, um, I guess just designs the, the way it looks, okay. it, 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 I really don't know how to clarify it any better than what's in my head, which I guess I should have thought that beforehand. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see if I can help tease it apart. Well, you know, you're talking about, you know, if you're talking about designs of a website, how the look and feel of a website, there's no, that, that's there, it, I guess. there's no right or wrong answer per se. The thing is, is that you build a site for whatever it's going to be used for. If it's going to be a, a farmer's or a, a market stall website or a, a um, not a, so what I'm looking for, a, um, oh, a directory. If it's going to be a directory, you want to build it to showcase all the directories with maps and other things. If it's going to be a marketing website or a promotions website, you want to build it with posts and pages and all that other good stuff that goes with posts and pages, etc. You know, you, you create the design based on what it is. If you're working with a, a client that's going to be showcasing their creativity, you want to build pages that showcase their creativity. You know, so there's no specific right and wrong or one style over another. You know, plugins are plugins. You know, you need plugins for whatever functionality is needed for, the, for running the site. Okay, well... If looking to build a site, would you like say the individual wanted to put their menu down at the bottom? Is that something you would recommend against? Why or why not? Well, if you put the menu down at the bottom, there's no top menu. You're breaking the protocols of everyone. We've we've been training people on the internet for 20 years on what to expect on a website. Mm -hmm. Expect where to find certain content. You know, and the menu is always expected to find up at the right or the top of the, the top of the page. It's kind of like menus um, along the columns. When I first started building websites, the menus were always on the right hand side. And then I came mm -hmm. then I had a client come along and insisted that the menu be on the left hand side. Well, at that time we were building in we were building in HTML blocks and other things and keeping a menu over on the left hand side was a lot harder than it is now and so okay. I, I had to learn to write some code to keep it over there but i changed it but over time what happened was the you've got fads that come and go and shortly after i did that a fad came into existence where all the menus were on the left hand side instead of the right hand side and then for a couple three years we had the fad of the hamburger menu which you see in mobile which it's very valuable in mobile because it allows people to see the screen and doesn't clutter the screen with the menu. You hit the hamburger, it expands the menu. Well, all of a sudden, websites on full proper monitors were using a hamburger menu. Everywhere. That would look odd. It, well, it did, it went, but it was, it was a fad that lasted for about two years at design. It was a design fad. And that's one of the problems with this you know, industry is we're, we're subject to design fads, whatever they're going to be. And they come okay. and go. 
they come and go over time and it's all part of you know building it's all part of building uh, websites you you'll see design fads it's kind of like the slider design fad you know mm -hmm. the slider was a big thing for a long time and now it's nobody uses it anymore hardly at all you know and i don't know what the next fad is and you can generally start to identify the fads if you if you pay attention to the guys who have shit loads of money to rebuild their site every two years that's where the fads usually start to appear or basically it's kind of like dealing with um artists or um photographers or movie people who are just coming out of film school and they're trying to do something completely different that's never been done uh -huh. and sometimes they create a fad out of what they do and then everyone goes back to the tried and true methods of everything working properly <laughs> You know, and this, this is the whole thing about this industry because, you know, half the time, a lot of the people who build websites are generally creative people to begin with. Yeah. And they get bored doing the same thing over and over. And if they happen to have a client who's willing to pay them at the same time they can experiment, all the better. <laughs> you know, so, and I've I've seen a lot of fads come and go. I've, I've, I've been part of helping create the fads. I didn't create the fads, but I've been part of using things at the very beginning of the fad to get a fad started you know so that's yeah. kind of cool it's just the way this industry is and the, as far as websites go that's what you what you get okay so there's not really much that you would tell you that, that you would recommend against for your client who says they want something completely out of the ordinary or no I, uh, say say they want to make their site so it's like really full really busy oh well i would i would steer them away from that there, there are design rules that have been proven over the years i learned the design rules when i went to when i went to uh applied communications when i took applied communications i learned the design rules and the design rules developed from newspapers and those design oh. rules still hold on the internet you know and it's something that doesn't really change is design rules and white space is important and the problem is, is as humans we see white space we want to fill it up we don't like white space for yeah whatever reason we just don't like white space and we want to fill it up problem is you fill it up it gets too cluttered and the average person can't find what you're looking for when you clutter it up when you clutter it up and eliminate all the white space you need white space to give the eyes time to relax between stuff the eyes and brains the eyes and brain time to relax between stuff on the page so that they don't overload their input meat so that makes sense so yeah th there are design rules that still stand the test of time and should always be paid attention to you can bend the rules it's kind of like well you're an artist you know once you learn the rules that's when you can actually start bending and breaking the rules. But you can't do it until you know why the rules exist, because when you bend and break them, you bend and break them in very specific ways. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, I, I, I had to learn that myself when I was going through applied communications, because I was always trying to just break the rules. And that didn't always work. <laughs> No, you got to bend them in every shape first. Yeah. Yeah, you got to bend them in every every way possible first. And you start breaking them. Yep. <laughs> well, that's it, I think. All righty. Well, hang on a second here. I'm trying to do something else. So that's why I was keeping on babbling and talking. Well, I've got something <laughs> else going on on the screen here as my computer is slowed right to hell down while I'm trying to do this. One specific First it has. Item. If it didn't slow down, it wouldn't frustrate you, and then you wouldn't continue learning patience, obviously. Yeah, I've learned enough patience. <laughs> it's time to just take a mallet to it and just beat on it. All right. Or threaten to pour coffee on it. Sometimes that works. Yeah, well, I don't drink coffee, and I'm not going to waste my Coke on it. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. All right, that wraps it up. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. We greatly appreciate you. It was a short, shorter show today. And mm -hmm. uh, we'll just call it a day. A little bit of music to carry us on out.
These are the days of thunder. We're gonna make time stand still. A quarter after midnight, and I'm watching the wall. Sometimes I feel so uptight, I just can't sleep at all. Every day. folks that's all we got now take care bye bye take care